Hey guys, Levelcap here, and this week in gaming was a painful one for Call of Duty players. Insurgency Sandstorm got a major update, AMD revealed some game-changing hardware, and more. It's been a tumultuous week for Call of Duty. The Black Ops Cold War beta has been plagued with technical issues and reports of players tanking their stats to abuse skill-based matchmaking. Warzone players were also subjected to three game-breaking bugs at once, rendering the Battle Royale basically unplayable. But today, I have some very good news. All three Warzone bugs have been fixed. The first were weapon glitches affecting the new weapons added with the Season 6 update. The AS Val could shoot through all surfaces with no damage penalty, the SP9 sniper rifle functioned like a hitscan weapon allowing for 400 meter headshots practically blindfolded. Both weapon bugs were addressed with a patch in the middle of the week. The third bug we reported on yesterday was an exploit that lets players have infinite tactical items. This led to players sitting in the gas and repeatedly healing to win matches. That was a particularly nasty exploit but was thankfully fixed late yesterday evening by the developers. And while things are finally evening out with Warzone, it's unclear what next week open beta for Cold War will be like. Hopefully Treyarch can sort out the technical issues within time. Insurgency Sandstorm got a major update this week, Operation Breakaway, that adds a new map called Tell, two new weapons, and a new range of weapon grips that augment the speed of reloading, aiming down sights, and more. But before we dive into that new content, there is a current bug with mod content preventing the new map from loading for many players. If this is happening for you, put minus sign disable mod subscriptions in the launch options for the game on Steam. Hopefully this will fix the issue. Now, about the new content. Tell is a reimagined version of the same map for the original Insurgency. It's been overhauled from the ground up, so while the general layout might seem familiar, it plays and looks completely different. It's also a surprisingly claustrophobic map with tons of tight alleyways and streets lined with cars. Overall, I think Tell seems pretty solid, but I'll have to play some more to really have an opinion. As for the new weapons, they're both pretty insane. Security gets the AUG A3, and the insurgents get the FAMAS F1. They both fire in the 1000 RPM range and are proving to be incredibly deadly against one or two enemies in close quarters. There's also new underbarrel shotgun attachments that seem very lethal. As for the new grips, they actually do change up the gameplay dynamically and you'll want to pay attention to them. The aiming grip speeds up your ADS speed, the loading grip speeds up your reloads, and the quick draw grip speeds up weapon swapping. And while the more deliberately slow-paced animations in Sandstorm certainly fit the core design of the game, they often leave it feeling a bit more unresponsive or sluggish. These new grips are massive speed boosters. Don't expect the game to suddenly feel like Call of Duty, but they're a nice option to have for players that feel at a disadvantage. Breakaway is a very solid update overall, and despite some new issues that were introduced with the update, it seems like an excellent addition to Sandstorm. AMD came out swinging with the reveal of their new new Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Pricing ranges from $300 at the lowest end to $800 at the highest end. Performance outpaces current gen Intel CPUs by a pretty significant margin in both multi-threaded and single-threaded workloads, which is a big first for Ryzen. The reveal wasn't without some criticism though, as some news outlets are saying that AMD's $50 price hike across the range of new CPUs prices them just beyond the budget territory they've had a stranglehold on since the original launch of the Ryzen in 2017. That said, current gen Ryzen 3000 CPUs are only falling in price over time and are still very powerful. Plus, Ryzen 5000 is backward compatible with a wide range of existing motherboards. AMD also gave us a sneak peek at their next gen GPU. While their benchmarks show it's slightly edging out Nvidia's RTX 3080 in three games, it's not a clear picture of what we can actually expect and we'll have to wait for a third party validation to have a real idea of just how they perform. Amazon have pulled the plug on their free-to-play PvPVE shooter, Crucible. It will officially go offline on November 9th. The cancellation follows a pretty disastrous release back in May. The game was quickly put back into closed beta so the devs could rework the game. Unfortunately, more than three months went by without them making any headway on improving user reviews of the game. They're offering refunds to players that have put money into the game. 
Apex Legends crossplay has arrived as a beta and allows players on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 to play together. And the devs have made some smart choices about how matchmaking works. If you're worried about PC cheaters ruining your console experience, the good news is that you won't be put into PC lobbies unless somebody in your party is playing on PC. And while that's great news for players with friends exclusively on console, it could be pretty disruptive for people playing with their PC friends. That said, cheating in Apex isn't as common as you might think. It's undoubtedly there, like it is for most online PC games, but I'll say it's pretty unlikely that you'll have an entire evening ruined by multiple cheaters. The Xbox Series X might prove to be a massive win for console players who missed out on the 60 FPS games with current gen hardware. Assassin's Creed Unity, a game notorious for its bugs and poor sub 30 FPS performance on console, runs at a locked 60 FPS on Microsoft's next gen console. Ubisoft's desire to push technical boundaries ultimately hamstrung the game on the console, leading to poor performance and crowd density issues, the game's defining feature. But the game now runs at a lock 60 FPS and will likely achieve resolutions above 1080p while doing so. Despite its bugs and technical flaws, Unity is still one of the better looking urban Assassin's Creed games, so it's definitely worth trying if you plan on getting an Xbox Series X. The PlayStation 5 is also offering some pretty big performance bump for PlayStation 4 games. Ghosts of Tsushima, which is getting a major co-op update later this month, will run at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 5. Considering the game's breathtaking visuals, it's unfortunate that it plays at 30 FPS on the current gen hardware. The performance boost offered by the PlayStation 5 is a very welcome one that will likely provide a very dramatic improvement to the overall quality of the game. It will also utilize the PlayStation 5's accelerated storage storage to reduce load times. Valorant is getting a new map and hero later this month. The new hero is a healer called Sky that has a massive AOA heal, a flash, a tracking attack, and an ultimate that reveals enemy players' locations. She seems like a pretty massive addition to the game that might finally displace Sage as the game's only healer and de facto pick for every match. The new map for the game is called Icebox and features a lot of zip lines for getting around. Sky and Icebox will be added on the 27th. In our final story today, sci-fi RPG The Outer Worlds is finally coming to Steam a year after launching on the Epic Store and consoles. The game is a spiritual successor to Fallout and was made by Obsidian Entertainment, the developers of Fallout New Vegas. Reviews were pretty glowing at launch and it just got its first DLC expansion last month. The end of the Epic Game Store exclusivity will likely result in a significant bump to sales of the game. And that wraps it up for this week in gaming. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're staying informed on gaming news. And if you did enjoy today's episode, drop us a like, subscribe if you want to see more news content in the future, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.